Outrocast. It is an honor and a pleasure to be speaking with both of you because literally a fan of both of your work for about 20-ish years now. Now, Matt, is that weird to hear that somebody's liked your stuff for 20 years, yet you're not an old man? It's weird to hear that. I mean, it's weird. I'm thankful that I've been able to do it for 20 years. Sure. Yeah. Now, guitar in hand we, there, I see the Gibson, I see the Marshall. Are you going for the endorsements or are you in endorsement shopping season? NAM is around the corner? Yeah, I am. You know, I really need more guitars. I only have about 21 right now, so I'm looking to get some more. There you go. So, Dave, throwing this at you, a two-parter. How are you and how long did you have to keep it a secret that season 12 was coming? Uh, I'm great. And season 12... Uh, wasn't a secret because that was back in 2013. This is in fact, season 15 of Aqua Teen. Now granted some of the episode, one season was 24 episodes. Another season was two. So season 15. You know what? I read one press release that said 12 and I- They're just, wrong. I'm wrong. They're wrong. They're out of step with us. This <laughs> well, is the micro a mini nano, nano season of five episodes. So following up that inept question with another inept question right here, um, when you were helming season one, did you know, hey, this is going to be a multi-season show? I don't think we thought it was going to be a multi-episode show. We were actually told that six and done. <laughs> six and done. So yeah. that in your case, you know, you had success before the show and working on a lot of horror and action-oriented films when did you start to see hey aqua Teen has long-lasting power here when when the head of the network came by our office one day and said have you guys seen the ratings for your show and we're like no are they good and he's like they're through the roof and then it was i think that same year our our dvd number two was coming out and on pre-sales on amazon it was number two behind star wars that's when I knew that we were close to beating the droids. And then at what point in your resume did Aqua Teen become the first name in the parentheses rather than say Hellraiser? <laughs> Hellraiser 3, by the way, not Hellraiser, yeah, the original. Yeah. Well, when it's a sequel, you can, you're still technically correct if you say the initial name of the franchise. So, for example, yeah. you worked on one of the Star Wars reboots. You would mm -hmm. still say Star Wars, and yeah, but you know, but I would have rather worked on Hellraiser than Hellraiser three, because Hellraiser is a way better movie. Just like Basket Case three, the progeny, terrible movie, yeah. but filled with goop. Yeah, that's the answer. So that's <laughs> when the goop you started putting it in uh, Aqua Teen at the beginning of the parentheses. Yeah, I don't use a. Uh, normal english uh, grammatical things like you guys do i'm basically more sonically charged in primitive dancing the fake news media keeps the the myths going there now no I back know, it's to terrible. you dave uh ask dave something he'll respond he'll respond the truth <laughs> nothing but the damn truth there and <laughs> dave besides the writing and creating and all that i love your voice work i've never seen this with meatwad what kind of voice filter goes through that or does that just shred your throat well just straight that's just straight from the source my brother really I gotta, and i gotta tell you your t-shirt scares me i don't <laughs> like to see scary stuff halloween is over we're coming up on christmas you need to be thankful brother does this I ain't thankful scare for, you i ain't thankful for nothing from dad's glenn dad's <laughs> hey, you I'm not a moron. You don't wear no shirt. I'm rudely interrupting you here, but your show featured Danzig a long time before Portlandia showed the sense of humor off of Glenn Danzig. Was Glenn easy to to work with? And if, if that's not a positive question, we go to the next one. Was he on Portlandia? He yeah. Oh wow. He shirtless sure on the beach. He wasn't difficult to work with, but he was really really full of himself we had sent him a drawing of himself like this is how we're going to look in the show and it was just a drawing in limbo and i think he called us and said that he was much taller than that i'm tall i'm and, way i'm way taller than that i'm way more cut than that 
that was the other thing. I'm way more cut than that. And we were like, uh, our animator was like, I can't give him more muscles. Like it will look cartoonish. And I know this is a cartoon, but more muscles <laughs> would just be ridiculously cartoonish. And then, uh, yeah, it, yeah, the whole thing taller. We were like, well, it's not like we put you next to R two D two and you're tall and you're shorter than him, right? Like, well, well, you know, we'll put you where you have to duck when you enter door doorways. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll make it. I I give you guys kudos also for you know besides having Glenn in there and you know the misfits and all that naming a show your pretty face is going to hell aka Stooges song is music the commonality between you two. Uh, yeah, it is. But we both listen to completely different things. I <laughs> know our Venn diagram like overlaps in certain places, but most of it is like very different, you know? Yeah. So who's the Van Halen guy of you two? Yeah, I'm more on the rock shreddy side. Yeah. I listen. I know what Dave listens to and I hear it. It's not that I don't like it. I just don't accept it into my ears so you're saying that that dave listens to the misfits without danzig i listen i grew up listening to chamber music i i never van halen that's never would not ne my parents wouldn't let me listen to van halen no i mean i would say like like i think we both get the humor of inviting crocus to be a part of your show but but Matt is the one who would non unironically listen to Crocus, and I'm the one. <laughs> I'm the one who would be like, "Oh no, no, don't turn that on here." Yeah. Uh, fun fact about Crocus before my last question and last compliment here: apparently, D. Snyder has it in his contract for his syndicated radio show that the one band he does not have to play is Crocus because D. Snyder does not like Crocus. So if you ever meet D. Snyder, ask him about Crocus. Yeah. That's weird because they're one of the best bands, way better than his band. What was the band from Totem Pole? Uh, what was that band that you brought in? Um, there was an episode Totem Pole where Carl was just crazy about this metal band from Sweden. Do you remember? Oh, was it Children of Bodom? Darren's oh, was not, that? but. Well, you guys have taste. That's what I'm learning. And the last question before that last compliment, uh, have mm -hmm. either of you seen the YouTube channel called the Baloney Factory that repurposes some of your content in showing stuttering John Melendez clips from his podcast? No. No. Send us a link. Okay. We'll do. We'll do. The Baloney well, Factory. Baloney Factory. Is it spelled baloney like EY or GNA? Incorrectly EY. Uh, I think okay. they kind of prove a point. Uh, and so the, the last compliment here, you know, 15 seasons – Still hilarious as ever, this series. I really look forward to more of it. I look forward to your other works as well. So thank you both for the many years of great laughs. Sincerity intended. And and Matt, I hope you get more endorsements at NAM. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I will. I'll bring <laughs> the blade. Thanks, Darren. We got we got more we got more different stuff coming out in 2024. So I'm psyched. Really, look out, look out for it. Outro cast. <laughs>